I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. I wanna know which tank will be best in Mythic Plus for Dragonflight, and I feel like I've been beating my head against a brick wall for the better half of the last six weeks. It's easy to speculate based on a lot of different factors, but I wanted a way to accurately pit all six tanks up against each other in a relatively controlled environment with no outside help. In this video, I'm gonna walk through my process of limit testing all six tanks to see which one can do the most damage, the most healing, and take the least amount of damage. Let's see which tank comes out on top. Quick disclaimer though, the method I use in this video I know isn't perfect, I'm going to be getting into it shortly. Also, while I feel like I can play most tanks competently, I'm clearly not the greatest player in the world. I'm prone to making mistakes during testing which will have a factor. Also, the builds that I ran for each tank are based off of my own preference, so they may not yield the highest damage or healing, etc. Honestly, I'm just trying to be a nerd who smashes buttons. Enjoy the breakdown. For those who are unaware, Mythic Plus testing isn't available all day, every day on the beta. Blizzard pushes out testing in waves for specific days of the week, mostly on the weekend. This test was actually done last Wednesday, between our first and second wave of dungeon testing. With that in mind, I needed to figure out a way to get to at least M0 content. The Dragon Isles aren't available to go to on the level 70 server, meaning that most of the Dragonflight dungeons are completely out of the question. The only available dungeon for Mythic Zero was actually Olamon Legacy of Tyr. I thought about maybe heading to the Temple of the Jade Serpent, but Mythic isn't available there either. The last few dungeons include Halls of Valor, Court of Stars, and Shadowmoon Burial Grounds. They all have Mythic enabled, but with them being legacy dungeons, everything is scaled down to like level 48 or whatever. So this is where we find ourselves. Olamon, Legacy of Tyr. While it is M0 content, I am going to be soloing it, which means that mobs just won't fall over after a few seconds. And, with enough mobs being pulled, I should be able to actually reach a high enough damage intake, allowing for my tanks to actually run the risk of dying if I make any major mistakes. Now, all tanks can pull off smaller pulls, so I needed to figure out a way to gather not only multiple mobs, but also different types so I can truly test this. After clearing a bit into the dungeon, there's actually a very juicy 6-pack pull that is very easy to round up, which includes the following. We have 5 Stone Vault Geomancers, 3 Hulking Berserkers, 4 Scavenging Leapers, 4 Vicious Basilisks, and 3 Burly Rock Throwers, which the total count becomes 19. With 19 mobs being pulled, we will for sure have a lot going on during the pull. Geomancers are casting Bolts and Chain Lightning, which is magical damage. We also have a few Tank Busters coming from the Vicious Basilisks. Avoidable AoE damage from the Burly Rock Throwers, as well as sustained auto attacks, and of course to top it all off, we have a fairly massive AoE stun from the Hulking Berserkers, who will also enrage. This, in turn, should force me to be mindful about my positioning as well as my defensive kit. In order to really maximize my damage intake, my goal was to do everything in my power not to kick. This sounds odd, but outside of some death grips and shockwaves, I tried my best to take as much damage as humanly possible in, an, in this M0. The last thing that I wanted to note is that the highest item level possible to achieve on beta is, at this time, upwards of 395 if you bought all the PvP gear on top of raid tier sets. For this challenge, I wanted to opt out of doing so. I aimed for a slightly lower item level range between 386 and 388. This is the raid finder item level going to Dragonflight, and I could have easily done this with base greens, but I wanted to test tier sets as well. Alongside keeping my item level a little bit lower, I also wanted to avoid consumables at all costs. There were a few standouts that happened by accident, but I will point those out for each class. They aren't anything crazy, but it's like a different enchant here or a different trinket here or something like that. But let's do this. So let's start with Guardian Druid. Just to let you guys know, this was after the Ursox Fury nerf. The brutal, brutal nerf. Anyways, like the rest of the tanks, you'll see I'll be running an identical route. Bear was actually relatively impressive. It peaked around 40k HPS, and there was a point where we were comfortably around 140k damage per second on 19 targets. The one thing that I really didn't practice, or I forgot about, was the tier set rework. It wasn't until after Incarnation ended that I started windmill slamming my gore procs. Unfortunately, I did get stunned a few times, but with Arcane Healing and Ursox Shield, it was it proved to be a non-issue. We ended the 19 target pull after 2 minutes and 40 seconds, and our overall DPS was 87.4k, and we maintained an impressive 32.3k HPS benchmark. At this point, I want to mention that while I did have an unused trinket, I opted out of using it. The only buff that I had was Mark of the Wild, since all druids have access to it. I'm eager to see what, how the other tanks compete. If this isn't proof that Bear isn't undertuned, then I don't know what it is. I say this on stream all the time, but Bear isn't bad, it just has a really shit tree design which makes most Bear mains feel uninspired to play it. Death Knight was an easy next pick, since I knew with its healing potential I would probably never die. The only concern that I had was how long the pull would actually live for. 
Blood Death Knight damage seems to be on the much lower end of tank damage. Most of their AoE damage comes from their passive proc of Shattering Bone, as well as the active ability Blood Boil. Outside of that, I'm praying that the mobs just bleed out. I do want to note that at times of testing, the tier set actually was not responding to tombstone usage, meaning that we weren't able to rush high stacks of lifeblood. After a whopping 3 minutes and 51 seconds of combat, we ended at 60.3k DPS and an outstanding 50.2k HPS. This would probably be expected from the Death Knight though, for those who have any idea of how the class operates. One thing that I do want to note though is that I was using res the Resonator Trinket, which granted me a solid absorb shield whenever I dropped below 50% health. I did end up- it did end up being about- Roughly 12% of my healing, but honestly, I didn't really even need the trinket to begin with. Protection Warrior was next, and this was actually a fairly difficult tank to measure. The biggest problem that I debated about was stances. Warriors are able to do this little thing called stance dancing, which entails the warrior swapping between battle stance and defensive stance based on the upcoming damage intake. With this being an M0, it would actually be practical for me just to sit in battle stance the whole time, and I could probably easily live. There is an argument to be made though that I could just sit in defensive stance which would put me in, a, in line with other tanks, but honestly I think the beauty of this class is the ability to actually min-max, and I'm sure the guys at the top end will be stance dancing constantly. It's off the global cooldown and it has a 3 second internal. So for this test, I planned on swapping to defensive stance outside of my burst windows. If I was able to use something like Demo Shout or Last Stand, I would actually swap to battle stance since I had a strong DR active already, but if I didn't have anything available I would swap back to defensive stance. While I never peaked as high as Guardian Druid in this test, I'd sustain damage was actually insane, even with stance dancing between D and battle. We ended the pull at 93.1k and only 24k HPS, which means that warriors tend to mitigate a lot more damage than other tanks. This is pretty common knowledge though, with shield block being one of the best forms of active mitigation. Most of the healing though comes from a combination of leech and ignore pain. I do want to note that the warrior actually was the only tank that had a weapon enchant on it, which did make up a small 2% of my damage. Similar to the Death Knight, I was also running the Resonator Trinket, and similar to Death Knight as well, it made up for about 10% of my overall healing. Clearly, this is the strongest tank on paper so far. Paladin was next, and this tank I was a little nervous for. With the change of playstyle going into Dragonflight, each and every global is relatively important. There are a lot of different buffs that we need to actively manage, including our Holy Power, alongside Dusk and Dawn Cycles, our Tier Set, Free Word of Glories, and trying to maintain a high uptime on Shield of the Righteous. There's other compounding factors as well, like Concentration Uptime, but we're not going to worry about that as much. Now, something I wanted to mention is that Paladin still has a few bugs with the class, with the main one being Bulwark of Righteous Fury not working, meaning that our overall damage with this talent selected should actually be 5-8% to higher. This was the same week that they gutted Bulwark of Order, meaning that we are going to have much less healing absorbs from Avenger Shield. Oh, also, Divine Toll is still bugged and sometimes won't grant Holy Power. With missing a good bit of damage, I am still pleasantly surprised with a 72.2k overall over three, roughly three minutes. The damage intake was actually pretty similar to Warrior. Paladin seems to actually negate a lot of damage up front, with relatively high block up time, high armor value, and the ability to block direct spells. The only thing outstanding in this test specifically was the use of scale, but honestly it only did 2% of my healing, which seemed slightly bugged. It only procced twice in 3 minutes. Mm. Oh well, moving on. Next we have the Demon Hunter. And this class, personally, I think is looking really good, but unfortunately, this is not going to be a good showcasing of it, because, uh, well, first, let's look at this flawless movement. I just want to say that I play this so poorly. I, like, from getting stunned on my very first fell dev to not being in range whenever I tried to hit, like, Soul Cleaver's Fracture, I lost a ton of healing and damage. Over the course of the pull, it did pick up, but... Yikes, does it look rough. Also, I was specifically running Last Resort and not running Fodder or Elysian Decree, so the damage was actually much lower than it could have been. Even with a really rocky start and a bumpy middle, we finished strong at actually 66k DPS and 34k HPS. Over the course of the pull, these numbers kept getting higher and higher, so I started poorly, but I ended up playing decent at the end. The pull did end up taking around 3.5 minutes, which is on par with where Blood Decay was, roughly, a little bit, a little bit faster. Uh, and I think it could have actually been much faster if I actually played better optimized talents for damage. Also, DH is definitely one of my least played tanks, so the panic-inducing start kind of threw me off. Last but not least, we have the Brewmaster Monk. I have to say, solo content as a Brewmaster is rough due to the lack of self-healing. But I knew that going into this, it would be an uphill battle. Uh, but oh boy, is that the understatement of the year. I gave this a few shots, but sadly, with how much damage we were taking, mostly magical, accompanied with lower health pool and armor, we fell over within the first minute of starting the pull. Even with using all of our defensives plus health pot, it was just not doable. It was quite the defeat. 
This is my biggest concern for the monk because the self-healing and mythic plus content is really important. If the tank can self-sustain, the healer then has one less person to really worry about, making those checks much easier. It's a meta that I think most players and healers have gotten pretty used to over the last few seasons. What is shocking is that the monk was the only tank who failed to do this. I'm speculating a bit here, but the average healer during the first season might actually get really comfortable with not having to pay attention to the tank as much, and then as soon as they get into a group with the Brewmaster, they're going to be in for a rude awakening, either having to shift their gameplay focus completely, or watch their tank perish. I just think it's cause for concern. I do want to talk quickly about some talents, like not running Bone Dust Brew, for example, but instead opting in for Healing Elixir. I personally think that for a one-point value talent, Healing Elixir actually is going to give you the most throughput, especially compared to Bone Dust Brew. I tried a bunch of different talents, but honestly, nothing prevailed. Anyways, I went back and I did a smaller pull, which was a little bit bigger than half size. And it included 11 mobs and a mixture of the standard pull, but I was able to pull it off without a hitch. While being half sized, it still required roughly 13k HPS, and I was able to maintain 80k damage per second for most of the pull, putting Brewmaster towards the top of the DPS tank rankings. Sadly, the lack of self sustain I just think hurts Brewmaster too much. My conclusion looks something like this. Even though Brewmaster couldn't meet the necessary sustain in larger pulls, the damage throughput is enough to qualify for a fairly high ranking. My only concern is the requirement of an attentive healer. Our top tank damage sustained was actually Prot Warrior, while the pe top peak damage was actually from Guardian Druid. Brewmaster though was right up there being very competitive with it. Blood Death Knights reign supreme though, uncontested in the ability to self-heal. Warrior and Protection Paladin are looking very similar with their damage intake, so both are looking very compelling. The all-around average tank I would say would probably be Paladin or Demon Hunter, when it comes to both damage and sustain. I hope that this was a cool little test. Like I said, it was just for fun, and, and this can honestly say so much. There are a lot of compounding factors at play, from item level to talent choices to skill, and clearly I'm just not a great player. Either way, it was fun and I hope you guys enjoyed. Huge shout out to all my patrons who support me, without you there'd be a lot less of this. Hope you're all staying happy, healthy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.